Good day and welcome to NAT. And in this video, I want to introduce a new feature of NAT that not many or any that I can think of um, messaging system have, and that is key value. So what is key value? Now if you go to the NAT website, you can see right here, it says it's a single platform that provides streaming, like PubSub. So we've been doing PubSub and then we saw what streaming is. And now we're going to look at key value and then later object store. So what is key value store anyway? Well, you can kind of jump into the NAS documentation to see what um, key value storage is. And we can go down in the documentary here. We can go here and then click on key value store and it tells you all the features about key value store i'm not going to spend the time reading it i'm going to show you quickly on the command line in the very next video we'll do it from go and then i have an example that i'll give you in a follow-up video basically a key value store is just an associate array so again do go check this out and look up to see all the benefit of um, the nas key value store i'm going to show you some of it on the command line so okay so let's jump to our command line and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say NAT stream list and I'm going to give it the minus A option. We haven't used the minus A option before, but the reason why I'm going to use this is because NAT build key value stores on top of Jetstream. And you'll see where you create a key value store, which is called a bucket. And sometimes I'll use key value store and bucket interchangeably. It simply means the same thing. And so what is a bucket? A bucket is just a collection or where you store a number of keys and values. So anyway, um, let's do this. Let's try and make sure that we're on the same page about the key value store, which if you think of it, it's more like uh, a map and go. Now on the, doc the NAT documentation site, it says it's an associate array, which is what people would call like a dictionary or a map, okay? It just simply means it's something where you can give a key, usually a string, that then gets mapped or associated with some other value, which could be anything. So for a quick example, let's do this. Copy our last example as example 11. Um, let's go to our example 11 directory and let's bring up Kodi, VS Code or Kodi and whatever you're using. And all I want is, um, what I'm going to do is remove some of this um, code because I'm really not interested in connecting to NATS really. So this is just to make sure that we're on the same page about um, what it, an associate array is or a map. Okay. So let's say in Go, I wanted to have association between um, values. So let's say I have a playlist and I want to store it in a associated array or a map. So what I might do is have the track number associated with the actual title of the song. So what I want to do is say something like I have a key that's associated to some value and in this case the value is the title, right? The track title. And then I have as the key maybe um, the track, okay? Number. Something like that. So how will I build all this? Well, I can do something like this. I can say, for example, I have key um, track one, you know, 001, and it's associated to the title, uh, let's say, Three Little Birds, right? Bob Marley song. Or I have something like something, whatever, okay? So um, here's the example. So how will you do this in Go? Well, in Go, what I'll do is say um, I have my playlist, you know, let's do make a map of string to string, for example, right? And then now I can say, um, you know, something like this, and then um, something like that, and something like that, right? And so this stores it in the map for me, and then I can print this out, the ending line, and then I can say, actually, we can iterate over the entire thing. And now, if I run this code, right click, run, and you should see, right? Um, and so I've associated this key with that value. And you can use it to associate pretty much anything, right? Um, the key is the one that has to be comparable, but we're not gonna talk about all of that. 
at single or whatever. Um, for net, the key is just a string and the value is a slice of bytes. So it can really be anything you want it to be. Okay, so now we're on the same page about what a map or associate array is or keys and value. Imagine if this is distributed. So if I, instead of storing this in my Go application or only this application have access to it, I could put it in that. And now many other applications can then be monitoring the bucket. So here my bucket is this playlist. So my bucket that contains these key values, I could have application monitor that. Or in that application can monitor a specific key in this bucket to say, I'm only interested in knowing or watching for changes to this particular key because over time I could be updating um, which song title is stored or associated with this key. So depending on the application I'm going to build. Okay, so want to make sure that it's out of the way. So now that we have that, let's see how we can, how NAT's uh, key value work. So let's start this up. Let's start that. I need NATS to be running, so um, let's go into um, this directory, and I'm going to, again, I still have the NATS config file, which is what we've been using all the time, so I'll say NATS server, and we can this configuration file, and there you go, NATS is running. So we haven't looked at the KV subcommand yet, so let's zoom in, in here a bit and take a look. So if you type NAT and enter, you'll see that oh, there are all those commands, some of them we've played with before, like stream, but there's this KV command, which is subcommand for interacting with a jet stream based key value store. So let's just type that KV, and then now you can see it says interact with a jet stream key, uh, based key value store, and the jet stream key value store uses streams to store key value pair for an indefinite period or a per bucket configuration time to live. That's TTL, which means the values will be automatically deleted at a certain, at a certain time. And we saw that um, feature too with streams, and it makes sense that how we can do the same thing because key value store is based is built on top of streams. Um, but <laughs> we don't need to worry about the details. So we're using a key value store, we're going to access it using key value, you know, commands or key value methods from Go code, okay, or functions in, from the jet stream in Go code. So you see you can list available buckets or the keys. And so we're listing the available buckets. There's none, but let's see, let's add one. So we can do, let's clear the screen, and we can say that key value add. And let's just say we want to add a store called music. And just like that, we have a key value store. You can see the defaults that it used. It has history, which is how many values should I remember for the same key? So we're saying here, for any key, just remember the last value. The history is one. But if history was two, for example, it will always remember the current value and the previous value. So if you update that key with a new value, well, it's going to remember the last value to add, and that might be useful for some applications. Um, and then, of course, you see it always oh, backed by Jetstream and you have unlimited storage and all that stuff. But then look at this. The name that's using for the Jetstream, the stream name is KV underscore music. Now, if we were to type that stream list by itself, like notice, there are no streams, right? That's because what we're using here, KV underscore, is a system stream. Right? It's not streaming that we created directly, so you have to use minus A to see the system stream. So now that we have a stream, what then? What can we do? NAT KV. So once we do NAT KV add, we can add a bucket, which we just did, and we can put values into bucket. We can get values and we can create values and so on if it doesn't exist, yada yada. So let's just put a value. So we can do NAT KV put. And we want to put into the music stream, and we're going to use the key one, and we're going to say three little words. And notice you can say, see it has one value. Um, we can go back and use the key two, and we can say, you know, 
no woman, no cry. Okay, and we can do that, and we see we have two values. Um, now, what about how to list the um, values, right? Or get the keys and values. So we can do, if we look, we can see here, if we go back, we can get, get a value for a key. Or we can do something like history to show the full history for a key, right? We can do watch, to watch the bucket, which is to watch the entire thing, or to just watch a specific key, which I mentioned before that you may be interested in knowing all the keys and values that are added to our playlist, or you might just be interested in knowing when a certain track alone get updated because for whatever reason the track um the title for the track might be changing so let's do nats kv and then let's go with the sic music and we can see that how we get the two keys that were put into that bucket now, watch is going to wait there and just keep watching the entire um, store for us, our bucket. So let's clear our screen. Let's add another, um, let's update a key. So we get to update the key, um, okay, test title. Oh no, now I've run out of music name. And so you can see, we got updated. So you can imagine that you could have hundreds of thousands of clients that need to be updated about something because they're going to be monitoring, you know, its key, this associated area or key value store, and they can be updated. Um, so we can also delete key value store. So we can say that KV um, delete, and then we can say from music delete key one, for example, and access to confirm. We say yes. Notice how our client here was notified that the key one was deleted. Now what's interesting about this is if we control C here, clear this up, and then we rerun this watch command, notice what happened. We get, we still have two keys. The first one, uh, we have a value for it, and the second one was deleted. So we see that it was deleted. And then this sort of, sort of claim that needs to track changes can tell what happened to the key. Now if I want to see, um, what happened, let's say I had history in, in, um, enabled, I could have said, you know, history, and I could say music, and I could say um, key one, for example, and you can see it tells me at all, we are in revision four of this um, key, and it's the last operation was deleted. It still doesn't have the value because it's gone now, but if we had history, you can imagine that all, we will have, um, you know, if we have more history was set to more than one, for example, we would see all the value, including the one entry that said was deleted. I'll cut it off here, and in the next video, I'll show how to use Nat's key value from Go. Then I'll show you a very cool but very simple example of how you can start thinking about the kind of application you could build with something like Nat's key value store. If you made it this far and you're not a subscriber, please consider being a subscriber. For those who are already subscribed, thanks. Um, thanks for being patient. Thanks for coming back. Take care. Stay safe. See you in the next video.